and I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm going to tell you straight up. I want to run two hours and f What's up my beautiful people? Welcome back to the channel. We are here for my first month marathon prep recap. And for those who don't know, I am going to be running the Rotterdam Marathon on April 14th, which is not too long, too long away. We have three weeks left before we race. And for those who are also new to the channel, hella good here. I've been running every day since May 15, 2017. On May 15th of this year, it's going to be my seventh consecutive year running every single day. I ran across the country. I like to New York City. I've done two 100 mile races. I've done a lot of fun things in terms of running, but also this is going to be my second ever marathon prep in seven years. This year was the renaissance year for me. Rebirth. I came with a vendetta. I came with this mentality. I'm going to be better by doing the small things that we ignore. And I'm so guilty of it. When I say the small things, who wants to stretch? Who wants to do mobility work after a run? You're just tired. Who wants to do stay consistent with your weekly workouts when you're just dead tired from the work? Who wants to eat more because they don't have any appetite, even though they need the calories? So I decided to make sure that I'm working out twice a week consistently. I'm doing a recovery routine every single night. I didn't do that last year. It doesn't matter if it's an easy run or a workout run. I am doing some sort of recovery routine every night. I am enhancing, adding, enhancing my diet. I've been vegan for eight years now, which is crazy to me. Eight years has gone so quick. It didn't feel like that. But I'm adding more fruits than I would usually eat. I was adding more, I'm adding more vegetable than I would usually eat. So I started to enhance the little things. I started doing mobility work, you know. I started doing yoga. I, I got myself some yoga session, at least trying to get in once a week. So those things I felt like have been the biggest factor for me to be stronger so far than I have been last year. Not just the workout. I know the, the long runs, the easy runs, the workouts were important. But to me, I think my biggest win came from doing the little things this year for the marathon prep. My coach really made this fun for me because he knew prior to this marathon prep that my favorite workout are fartlek. For those who don't know fartlek, it means speed, speed play in Swedish. It is fartlek day today. It is my day today because I have a fartlek, y'all. I remember going into that just excited and I just turned it on. So most of my average pace for this was low five minutes and I got some sub five minute paces per one minute though. So you go hard for one minute and you jog for one minute. This is with a two mile warm up and two mile cool down. And I remember the following that weekend of that week, I was in Boston and I had to do my marathon pace workout based on last year's because I wasn't at the fitness level that I needed to be. So my coach told me to do a, a three mile warm up and then eight miles at 6.30 pace. I was much fitter coming into this marathon prep compared to last year because I started doing a little mini workout since October of 2023 leading up to this. So I was doing the prep before the prep. I, I for sure was confident that I was going to run 630. But the issue for me was don't run faster than 630, which I couldn't help myself ended up doing that. So I was running most of those. I did The average was uh, sub 625. So I was comfortably running in 622, 623. And the last mile, I was like, the coach is going to get pissed at me. I decided to push it. I ran a 612 and it just felt good because I was just fitter. I was just better. And when we move on the following week uh, of the rest of the month of January, we had I had like a 15 1K repeat. And I remember that 1K repeats and flags of the year prior to, I was dying. And coach told me to run each 1K repeat at 349, but I was running this in the 330s. We're talking about 331, 333. Very comfortable, very strong. And the best part about for it this year for me has been I've been in control of my paces. I share a coach would say, hello, hold a certain pace. I would literally be like, how, it, how in the world? That is super wild. How can I do that? I need to try to call a friend. Can you come with me? So you do the pace and I just stay next to you. How do people do this? So this year that has changed so much where I found a way to do that. But you know all it was? Practice, practice, practice. That's what it was. Practice doesn't necessarily make perfect, but practice makes improvements. And I was able to, when you get certain fitness level too, when you look at your watch, you hit a split, you, I was just able to have my body just stay that way for the next play. And I would play a game with myself too. Okay, hello, you just hit six flat, right? Don't look at your watch, keep this feeling. Let's see, it will be six flat again on the next split. And it'll be six flat. So I don't even know exactly how to explain it to you, but it is possible in due time. And I, I still get it how I'm able to get to this point, but it's very hard to explain. Last year, you would tell me, I'd be like, how? 
how. So that also is the difference between an experienced runner and not experienced. And I'm still getting there with experience. I'm learning more. I got a little more experience from last year to this year. So I can trust myself to hold a consistent pace um, for as long as I need to for all these workouts that I've been able to do so far in this prep. I think my favorite run of this prep was when coach told me to run six one mile repeat at 545 minute mile pace. I was just like, huh, do you have this in you? But I knew it was in me. So the year, the, the things that I've been going through this year compared to last year, last year I would be trying to convince myself that I'm strong enough to run this workout. And I was actually scared to go attempt these workout. This year, I wasn't scared, I'm not scared. I'm nervous to let myself down because I came in fitter. I know I'm fitter than last year, so I'm thinking, I know I can run these paces. I was all confident looking at the thing this weekend and now I'm like, now that it's time to go, I'm nervous because to run 545, I know I can do 545 minute mile pace, but to repeat it six times, but I think I'm going to do it. I know I'm going to do it. Okay. So it's more of being nervous and not being able to live up to what I think I can do. That's what this year has been all about for me because I have gotten stronger. I have, I have gotten faster, not just physically, but mentally I've been much stronger. So when I did this one, six, one mile repeats, I was literally running 530s, 533, 536, 538 was my slowest, but coach prescribed me to run 545. Since then, the theme has been whatever coach told me to run, I've been running 10 to 15 seconds faster. And he was aware of it, and he was also learning how much fit I was getting. I see y'all home. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy right now, Sam. Nine day from last year. You tell Hella that he can run the five minute split this long. I say you're lying. Yeah, last year. Uh, you're gonna be a new PR for your chill now. Yeah, yeah. With the pause, if you take the pause away, it's a PR. Yeah. Without a doubt. Yeah. I've never. Wow. It's not something that you should do when coach told you to run a certain pace. You should stick to it. But I felt that I needed to push a little bit because I was holding myself back. My body wasn't really. It wasn't getting worked. It wasn't feeling that I'm doing something. So that's the reason I'm able to run 10, 15 seconds faster. And when I spoke to my coach, he said, it makes sense and I'm glad that you're doing that. You're not holding yourself back. But I also was, I am smart enough not to go overboard where I'm just spent where I can't finish that workout. So it's been that theme uh, for, for this marathon prep. And it has gotten me so confident. And I know I don't talk about what is my goal to run this marathon. So for those who are watching right now, I'm gonna tell you straight up. I'm gonna tell you straight up. I wanna run two hours and 45 minutes at this marathon in Rotterdam come this April. So I've got to a point where I've been able to push myself and be able to hit these workout where my confidence level is gradually getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Man, I can't believe my coach had did me dirty like that. I gotta run 10 miles today after I did a hard 10 mile workout yesterday. But I guess it's all part of the, the journey. I just gotta trust the process. I'm out of breath. Just putting my stuff on. I am that tired. I'm out of breath putting on my shoes. I'm out of breath putting on my shoes. Let's do this. Up. 10 mile. Done? Done. Uh, after to my workout yesterday, I'm thinking I'm gonna be really destroyed today. I'm like 100, I'm fine. And I don't know, I'm fine. I don't know, I don't know how to make it, like how to express that. I'm like, well, it's a little too early into the prep, but at the same time, it's, I've been actually getting ready for this anyway. So it was not like I started almost three weeks ago. I started like since October when we were doing this little build up, but a little tight is, but I'm fine. I could have picked it up, but I was just like, slow down. We got Saturday workout. I'm done. 10 miles in the book. 747. 747 is an airplane, guys. I'm an airplane geek. I just ran 747. <laughs> there was a workout at some point in February. I believe it was around February 10th. I won't forget this day because coach told me, hell, I warm up for six miles and then run eight miles at little slower than marathon pace so 620 i think that's what it was let me see uh it was yeah 618 marathon pace so to me i was like uh oh 
when I run six miles, my legs are going to naturally be heavy because heavy, he's telling me to run a slower pace, right? And now, can I have it in me to turn on my fast twitch muscle to go at 618 per mile pace for eight miles? And I was able to do that. I was able to, most of that, I, have, I was hitting 612 split consistently, consistently. And I went faster than the 618. That day was a, a defining moment to me that, wow, even though I knew I got stronger, but that little doubt that you have in the back of your mind, I started leaving that behind. I really did. And that was, told me everything. Hey, like, you ran six miles, you had that underneath your leg, 15 minutes of going slow, and now you're able to turn it on at faster than marathon pace for eight miles, and you were in control. It wasn't even the fact that I was hitting the split. I felt in control. I didn't feel beat up. I didn't feel exhausted. I was really proud of that workout. Sunday push day. Let's get this, this running. I am wrapping up week three of my marathon prep on this beautiful Sunday morning. I got three miles to do today. So this is my quote-unquote day off. Uh, my coach and I had a discussion. Uh, what happened last year that I could change this year? So my easy days, the shortest was between six to eight miles. So we decided this year, let's keep that even a little shorter so to let my body recover this is very good though because especially the fact that I had a 16 mile long run yesterday with eight of them being a marathon pace on Wednesday I had six one mile repeat in the 530s so this allowed my body to heal and I'm excited about that because I need everything within myself to be ready for this upcoming week so Three miles on Sunday. And y'all know I said Sunday push day. It's not Sunday chill day yet. Until we gotta work in. Then we can chill as hard as we want. All right, let's do this, y'all. The first humbling run for this marathon prep was back, it was three days later on February 13th where I had to do uh, three by three. So the prior day actually, the 12th I was supposed to do, there was a huge snowstorm, so I decided to flip it so I can safely run these runs. So I went out there. So I just got back from my run and today's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Yesterday, the 13th, I was supposed to do a workout that's three by three miles and basically warm up two miles and uh, turn it on for, sorry, turn it on for three miles at 620 pace and then three minutes rest and repeat that three times with the two mile cooldown. So it ends up being about 13 miles, but it started snowing the night before. It was really bad out. So I made a decision and I told my coach later to switch today's run, which is supposed to be an easy mile run um, to yesterday and then do the workout today. And I was satisfied with my decision because when I was out there running, it was so slippery out there. I love the snow, but with the pace that I'm supposed to move, it would have been tough. So when I got out there today, when I woke up, my body felt weird. I was kind of nervous. Um, during the warm up, I didn't like it. I, I was going like eight something and it was hard to go eight something. So I'm thinking to myself, me being myself, I'm like, I'm gonna go faster than the, the 620. Even the coach told me to be make sure I'm around that area because I have a workout coming up again very soon. And I said, no way I'm gonna be able to even do 620 today. And it was a battle. It's 27 degrees, head one was, I couldn't find a rhythm. I was breathing heavy, my heart rate, my watch is beeping at me, your heart rate is going way above. Um, this is the most my watch has beat for me, and I have like a, one of those armband uh, heart rate monitor. And today I was just like, yeah, welcome to marathon training. I'm in the middle of week four, but it's not, week four hasn't been completed yet. It was just like, welcome to marathon training, Hella. This is what you thought that you would never hit because all the times my coach been telling me throughout our workout, I've been hitting it 15 seconds faster, you know, 20 seconds faster. And I feel the work, but I feel strong, I'm in control, but not today. Today it was like, I started questioning a lot about myself today, and it was just, you know what? I told myself, put it behind you when you get home, and it's, you get better. Even if it's not physically, mentally, I definitely got a little bit better because I got humbled. I really got humbled because I, the, the workouts I've been doing uh, leading up to today, I'm just like, mm-hmm, yep, I'm here. Renaissance here, I am transforming. I'm still transforming, but today I was just like, Hella, take a step back now because uh, the work hasn't even started yet. So that was today. I don't even think I hit the 620 average. So you guys will see that. Yeah. 
I didn't feel great about it, even though the numbers, what, uh, so 623 average, the first one, second one, 621, and the third one, 621. Even though those yeah. look like I'm around the 620, but the effort didn't feel, it felt harder than the mile. Yeah, yeah, dude, I mean, you're so right. Welcome to marathon training, right? Because that pace felt so easy mm -hmm. on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then it felt so hard today. And part of it is just the ebbs and flows of training. Part of it is training in the winter. You know, yeah. when weather can be a big factor and just – I think it's the accumulation effect of, of what you've been doing but i think workouts like this are good sometimes because look at some point in the marathon you're gonna have to grind yeah the last six miles of the marathon are gonna feel a lot more like today okay than saturday okay. right yeah because today felt like a grind let's fast forward to going to flagstaff for the mini camp that i did with hoka and I get there, we, I had a progression run. It was a 60 minute progression run. So coach told me and a bunch of uh, influencer writers that were out there with Hoka uh, doing this project, the Media Marathon Network. And he said, he enjoyed the first 30 minutes together as a group, you know, but the last 30 minutes, hit it on. Ben is running with us today. Huh? <laughs> so we're going out 30 minutes and progression run back. I am actually excited. Even though it is loud wind, we get tailwind. You know, I'm rolling at low sixes, but the progression back is hard. It's hard to breathe here. Uh, altitude. I can't control my breath, but maybe that means to back off a little bit. Yes, I'm fitter, but it doesn't matter because altitude will humble you. Um, my lungs um, taste like blood, like iron, you know, that's the thing, but we got a little bit better at the end of the day. Um, the effort was definitely in the low sixes, but I don't think if the time shows that. I did see a 6-19 split, so we'll see. This try is time. the other reason I think try, we're try, really try, 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 try. The rest was in the six minutes, but it wasn't as progression of a run that I would like, but the effort was absolutely there. I was winded, I was breathing heavy. Uh, I had a strong side wind, not headwind. I had the, the, the headwind going out, so coming out, I had a little bit of tailwind, but a little bit of a side wind too. It was a tough one, but following that weekend, I had a big run, which was a 20 mile run in Phoenix. I went down from 7,000 feet to drop to literally just over a thousand feet, right? So I can feel that day, that following day when I went on my easy run, I can breathe good. I'm like, I wish today was my workout day because I feel so good, I feel hella good. And the next day I got out there, the, the prescribed paces was, you're running 20 miles hella with a two mile warm, warm up, and the next 16 miles you're doing alternating miles. So one mile is gonna be at 620, the other one's gonna be at 710. 620, 710, you're repeating that for 16 miles with a two mile cooldown, so a total of 20. But when I got out there, boy, are y'all ready for this? Uh, I started feeling so good and I was just like, I can breathe, it's feel, it felt like someone gave me an oxygen ma mask to tell y'all. I was just, we're talking about like low sixes, I'm talking 6.11, seven flat for the easy, 6.11, seven flat, 7.03, 6.04, 6.01, flat, 6.01, six flat, six flat, and the last split was 5.59, and I couldn't believe it, but it wasn't even the split that I was running much faster, but the rate of me doing it consistently made me so proud because last year, if you were to tell me, Hela, go run, let's say three miles, 620 average i will come and give you 620 average but the effort is going to be so much i would run one split maybe 610 and then the no, the next one would be like 630 and i'll run another one really faster than the 610 just to get the average of 620 but even though it looks 620 i was all over i was up and down that day it was wow hella you've come a long way and i love that workout especially it was nice and warm in phoenix if you know that water dam area that everybody runs around by tempe um, by the airport, I was having the time of my life that day. That 20 mile run was closing out the first month of my marathon prep. And I was so proud, I was so happy that I got the experience that coach told me last year. Hell, like, just because you didn't hit your goal last year, that marathon prep doesn't just disappear. When you start working out again, your muscle memories are gonna come. You've built a stronger mindset and it works and he was right. So that is 
first month of my Rotterdam marathon prep, my beautiful people. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the second month. I'll see you all soon. Let's get it. Let's go.